Welcome back to BAS 120. We're working on Chapter 7. This is Part 5 as we go through. Now, what we've talked about in the first four parts is how to do hypothesis testing, where we have one sample and we're comparing it to an assumed population and a null hypothesis. Now we're going to get into what is, frankly, far more likely in the real world. What if we have two samples? If I'm a business and I'm testing... Uh, I think we used the example last one. What if I'm testing uh, two different brands of shoes and I want to compare the shoe styles? Or what if I'm comparing multiple sets is probably more likely or multiple regions or trying to understand more than just one sample. So luckily Excel and statistics has lots of tools to do that. So the question is, you know, what if we're comparing more than one sample and we want to compare samples against samples? Well, it's kind of nice in Excel because there's an analysis tool pack. Remember, you go to data analysis tool pack and you've got every type of test for whether the standard deviation is known. Uh, they've changed it here to the variance, which is simply the standard deviation squared. But if you know the variance, you know the standard deviation and vice versa. Um, so if the population standard deviation is known, you're going to use the z-test. If the po if standard deviation is unknown, you're going to use a t-test. Um, and then we just have to assume whether their, their variances are equal or unequal. There's a last test, a test for variance, which is called an f-test, which you're going to see in a moment when we're doing multiple samples, we're very, very interested in what type of variance the different uh, underlying samples has. So you, you use these analysis packs. So just like with the other examples, one sample, instead of uh, going and using uh, TINV or TDIST, you go to your data analysis pack based on the sample you're trying to compare. You do one test and it gives you all the results. And, we go through every sample in the Excel videos, uh, which I encourage you to watch. So in the performance of two suppliers, you just utilize the same uh, test. Here's a t-test under data analysis. It might be a z-test. It might depend upon what, your, what, what uh, information you have, as back here it shows. And you basically just do the same six steps to draw your conclusions. Now. What if you want to do multiple samples? Like let's say here in this example, we want to compare five or six different sales regions. Well, now we'll do what's called an analysis of variance or sometimes called ANOVA, where we're, where we're trying to compare several samples to see if there's a difference. So we're trying to see if there's a statistical difference with the, on a single factor of at least one of these samples. So again, we're going to go to data, data analysis. There's an ANOVA for the single factor. We'll enter our range, and then we'll it'll compare all the means and give us all the data. And again, there's an example in the Excel videos that show you exactly how to do this in Excel. But now what I'd like to do is take a moment and hope this works. I'd like to... Go, okay, I hope you can see this. This is kind of an interesting... Um, understanding ANOVA visually. What this does is, is I've got four samples here. Sample one, sample two, sample three, and sample four. And right now I've made the means all the same. And notice the variance of each group is exactly the same. What ANOVA is going to do is it's going to calculate our F statistic. It's going to basically break down our deviations between variances between the means, our averages, versus variances within the group. Now, what our F value is going to do is, is, our, is our variance caused by difference in the mean increases my F value, because this is in the numerator, my F value is going to go up. As if as my variance within the, the groups increases, my F value is going to um, go down. Now, as I get a very large F value, that's going to 
prove that I have some sampling differences. So let's play around with this and see uh, what we can do. Let's change this mean. So we've got four samples now. Sample here, the green bar. This is our range or our variance. The green bar is our mean. So we've got three samples. Let's say class one got this test score, class two, class three, and then class four was way out here. Well, here it shows our F value, and ANOVA will calculate that for you, and it'll determine whether that value is within or outside the critical range. But what I'm trying to do with this right now is just to have you understand what's working behind the scenes with ANOVA, how it's analyzing that variance, and how it splits that variance between variances between the means, which if there's a lot of variance between the means, that tells us our groups are very different. If the variance is caused by within the groups, then there may not be such a big difference. So let's let's play around with the variance of this one and see what happens. Notice as I increase the variance of this one, my F value is going down because a lot of the variance that we're seeing amongst these groups is caused by variance not between the groups, but variances within the groups. Uh, let's move this guy. Now, if I move this guy way up, what's going to happen? Well, I'm going to get a larger variance between my means. Notice my F value is increasing. Notice if I shrink this variance, now I'm having less variance within the groups and more of my variance is explained between the means and that's causing my F value to go up. If I move this guy up a bit or down more extreme, this guy down less. Oh, now I've got lots of variance. Notice if I shrink these variances, now my F value gets very, very large. Same thing here if I sh shrink the variance. Basically, what it's saying is I shrink the variance. It's kind of saying, well, I'm more sure now, right? Like, let's think of pro golfers. If you had to predict, a pro golfer, they're very, very consistent. There's very little variance. So it basically gives you more, to a certain extent, more confidence in your mean or more confident that the difference between, let's say these are my average golfers and these are my two pros, you know, wow, there's a lot of difference between these two means as opposed to a scenario like this. where my two golfers might be, their means might be different, but their variance is all over the place. Notice my F value is going down. So you've got this website. Uh, I think it's a great way to understand what's going on behind the scenes. Now, the examples you just, uh, Excel will give you all this data, but I wanted you to understand how ANOVA is working. It basically splits our variance between how much of our variance is caused by, by differences in the means? And to prove that we have differences in our samples, we want a lot of that. We want a lot of differences between the means versus how much of our variance is just caused by variances within the groups. The more of that we have explained by differences within the group, the, the smaller our, our F value will be. The larger the F value, the more likely we have a difference between our samples. And again, just like with multiple, you go through the exact same six steps to determine it. Now, <clears throat> We've done all of this, but what if we're talking about proportions? What if we're talking about brand preferences of like, dislike, you know, single? We're going to talk about the chi-square test for independence in the next video. Uh, any questions? Let me know.